Today we present the Leukemia Blood Smear Image Classification. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL, is a blood cancer that is notoriously difficult to identify and can be deadly within months if not treated. Current identification of diseased blood samples are completed by examination of an expert pathologist or oncologist. Because machine learning models have been used in the medical field to aid in screening and decision-making for physicians, one use case for machine learning is screening blood smear samples to differentiate between normal and ALL cells, especially due to the challenging nature of appropriately classifying them. Deep learning makes use of neural nets, specifically for images, convolutional neural nets. Convolutional layers within the networks provide the ability to better learn the image by using filters or kernels to analyze a portion of the image and create an activation map for its features. Our data set originates from the IEEE International Symposium on Biomedical Imaging's 2019 Conference Challenge. It's currently available on Kaggle. It consists of blood smear images of lymphocytes, Training, validation, and test data is provided. The first step in our analysis is data cleaning and exploration. We explore the data provided by the challenge authors comprised of training data, validation data, and test data. Other key observations is that data is structured in multiple folders, especially the training data, where folds of data were created. There is no patient overlap between data sets or folds of data. The ground truth label and structure and location varies between training and validation folders. We also discovered that no ground truth labels existed for the test data, so we opted not to use it. Between the remaining images and training and validation, there are 13,247 images of cells from 90 subjects. Our only input data for our models are the images themselves and the labels assigned by an expert. Initially, we loaded our data into a pandas data frame for easy manipulation. On the right, you can see several randomly selected images visualized. This highlights the difficulty in differentiating normal and cancerous cells. We also noted excess blank space in the images that could benefit from cropping. Next, we explored the data further and discovered that the data is biased towards ALL cells and could benefit from data augmentation to balance the data. The initial data set has a rush, roughly two to one ratio between cancerous and normal images. In the image processing portion of our analysis, we performed processing in batches in preparation for our models. We cropped the images, added file paths for the cropped images to data frames. We split the training and validation data. Additionally, we integrated an optional resizing functionality to standardize the cropped image dimensions. The systematic approach optimized computational resource usage while retaining pertinent image details. Next, we moved on to model training and analysis. We started with a pre-trained model, the ResNet 50. It is a convolutional neural network that uses residual learning. It is 50 layers deep and includes residual building blocks or shortcut layers that are trained later when the model is retrained. This allows for better evaluation of the feature space of an image by the model. It also addresses the vanishing gradient issues seen in deeper networks. It's currently available in the Keras library. Finally, we added additional layers on top of the model to customize it for our images. Here you can see the model performance. Despite our efforts to improve accuracy and mitigate loss, the model demonstrated limited improvement, plateauing around an accuracy of approximately 31% across both training and validation data sets. The loss fluctuated but remained relatively high throughout training, indicating challenges in effectively learning from the data. Next, we custom built a CNN model. We created a sequential model in Keras with the following architecture. Three alternating layers of convolutional layers and max pooling layers each, a flattening layer to convert 2D to 1D feature vectors, a fully connected layer with ReLU activation, and an output layer with a sigmoid function for binary classification. 
Here you can see the initial CNN model performance. The plots show the training and validation accuracy and loss over 20 epochs. Initially, both training and validation accuracy increase while the loss decreases, indicating the model is learning. However, there seems to be overfitting as the training accuracy continues to increase while the validation accuracy stagnates or decreases and validation loss increases. Knowing that our data set was imbalanced, we decided to augment the data first with additional HEM labeled normal images prior to any additional refinement. We created a new data frame with normal images randomly rotated, shifted, or flipped to add into our initial data and create a more even distribution between our two labels. We then revisited the distribution of images in our train validation and test sets. Furthermore, we utilized image data generator settings to augment the training set an additional step by randomly flipping images either horizontally or vertically. After implementing data augmentation, we observed several notable improvements in the performance of our model. First, both training and validation accuracies experienced a significant increase, indicating a marked improvement in the model's ability to generalize to unseen data. Second, there was a noticeable decrease in both the training and validation loss, suggesting that the model had become more adept at learning representations from the data. Additionally, we observed a significant reduction in the gap between the training and validation accuracies, indicating that the issue of overfitting had been mitigated. However, as you can see, our learning curve was inconsistent along the validation data set, so we looked for further model refinement methods. Our next step in model refinement was implementing a hyperparameter grid search. Despite the augmented data yielding promising results, we recognized the potential for further optimization. We chose to explore the range of epochs, learning rates, and dropout rates to optimize our model's performance. By adjusting the number of epochs, we aim to strike a balance between model complexity and training time, ensuring sufficient learning iterations without overfitting. Varying the learning rate allowed us to effectively navigate the optimization landscape, seeking convergence to the optimal solution without excessive oscillations. And exploring dropout rates helped us regularize the model enhancing its ability to generalize by preventing over-reliance on specific features. After running our grid search, the best hyperparameters were found to be a dropout rate of 0.25, an epic of 20, and a learning rate of 0.001. We then ran our model with the selected best hyperparameters and saw significant improvement on our training and validation learning curves. The accuracy of each increased, the loss decreased, and both metrics became more stable between each epoch. After observing the extended plateau on the accuracy and loss graphs, we determined that implementing early stopping would be the next best step in our model refinement. Implementing early stopping post hyperparameter tuning ensured that the model was already finely optimized in terms of architecture and hyperparameters. By halting training when the model's performance plateaued on a validation data set with the patients equal to three, Early stopping acted as an effective regularization mechanism, preventing the model from memorizing noise in the training data set and further improving its generalization ability as shown here. Finally, we looked to obtain a more comprehensive evaluation of our model's performance and generalization capabilities. We utilized a K-fold cross-validation with five folds to evaluate model performance comprehensively. We cloned the base model for each fold to ensure unbiased evaluation and prevent information leakage, and we trained and evaluated the model along each fold, storing validation metrics for subsequent analysis. Ultimately, the average validation loss that was found was 0.3080, and the average validation accuracy that was found was 0.8709. These metrics indicate the model's robustness across different subsets of the data, ensuring that its performance metrics were not biased by a specific train-test split. Additionally, cross-validation enabled us to verify the stability of the selected hyperparameters, our early stopping, and ultimately provide confidence when selecting the final model. Overall, this iterative process of data augmentation, hyperparameter tuning, early stopping, and cross-validation contribute significantly to refining and validating our model for optimal performance on unseen data. When implementing each stage of model refinement on our test data, the outcome of which is currently displayed, 
we can see the steady improvement of our model performance, ultimately leading to a consistent final model. Now moving to our final conclusion, the performance enhancement of our model through each stage of refinement was significant. Our final model achieved an accuracy of 0 0.6738 and a loss of 0 0.7715, which when compared to the pre-trained ResNet model that we began with, we doubled the accuracy and reduced loss by 1.95. Now further improvements can be made to our model. As we can see, when generating predictions with our final CNN model, most of our images are accurately predicted, but some are incorrect still. We can improve our model by either gaining additional samples from more patients due to subject variability, or by consulting with subject matter experts to assist in feature selection and extraction techniques and to gain a better understanding of their knowledge base and expertise. With the addition of these improvements, the significance and impact of our model is profound. Our model accurately discerns cancerous cells versus healthy cells, which can be vital for diagnostics, and it demonstrates a reliability in clinical applications, further showcasing machine learning's transformative power in improving patient outcomes. Thank you.